Every morning in the wild, a gazelle awakens. One thing is for sure for the gazelle that day, as every other. She must run faster than the fastest lion. If she cannot, she will be killed and eaten. Every morning, a lion awakens. For the lion too, one thing is certain. This day and every day, he must run faster than the slowest gazelle. Whether fate names you a gazelle or a lion is of no consequence. It is enough to know that with the rising of the sun, you must run, and you must run faster than the day before for the rest of your days, or you will die. We all have to run. Run the race of life. emerged from the great primeval swamps over 300 million years ago. They are cold-blooded, yet they have survived hundreds of ice ages. Some have jaws as strong as a T-Rex. Others wear a giant shield. Some are small and fast. Others are long and stealthy. All are remarkable winners in the reptile race of life. Reptiles colonized every continent on Earth. As the prehistoric land masses drifted across the planet, reptiles adapted until they became the greatest creatures that have ever walked the Earth, the dinosaurs. These thunder lizards ruled the Earth for over 160 million years. Then they suddenly disappeared, possibly wiped out by a giant meteor. But smaller reptiles survived. They have colonized every ecosystem except Antarctica. From the murky waters of rivers and oceans to the rocks and crevices of sun-baked deserts, they stalk their prey in silence through dark jungles. In many places, they are kings of their domain. They are cold-blooded and hot-headed. Reptiles are the armor-plated battlers of the race of life. One of the most charismatic reptiles has over 5,000 different kinds. Many live in grasses and woodlands. But most live where it's sunny, hot, and dry. Lizards. These diverse creatures can be two and a half meter dragons or tiny two centimeter geckos. Some lizards are covered in horns and defend themselves by squirting blood from their eyes. Others live on red earth and have blue tongues. And a few have deadly toxic bites. But the strangest collection of lizards lies on the driest continent on earth a place with giant flightless birds and jumping herbivores. Australia. The thorny devil. He collects dew on his skin and channels it to his mouth. He might look terrifying, but he's only 20 centimeters long. This crazy walk is confusing a potential predator. The wedge-tailed eagle can't decide. Is he a meal, or is he just a piece of scrub blowing in the wind? The devil has survived this time. Devils can tuck in their heads, exposing predators to a prickly morsel. This parenti has changed his mind.
Getting a good meal out here can be tough. Unless you eat the only animal that lives here by the millions. This devil can eat up to 45 ants per minute. And in one meal, he can gobble up over 2,000. The race of life for the thorny devil is more a weight of life. He waits. The ants walk by. He eats. For the ants, it's an ambush of life and a game of numbers. Thousands of ants will be eaten, but back in the nest, there are tens of thousands of eggs. Individual ants will die, but the colony will survive. One of the largest living lizards on Earth lurks in the Australian outback. The Parenti, a giant monitor lizard. Her domain stretches across the vast dunes and plains of the desert interior. Her bite is venomous, and her forked tongue can taste the smell of her prey. She is nearly two and a half meters long, with a slender neck and powerful claws. She can climb trees and rip open termite nests. First, a little pre-dinner refreshment. Water is in high demand out here. After a deep drink, the Parenti is ready for the hunt. A king brown snake, one of the most venomous snakes in the world, and one of the longest at nearly two and a half meters. The Parenti spots the snake. She approaches carefully. Brown snakes produce large amounts of venom so they are lethal even to large animals. The Parenti must seize the snake from behind the head to avoid being bitten. She's completely focused on the task ahead. The Parenti and the brown snake are evenly matched. This is a fight to the death. The Parenti has a strong bite and backwards curving teeth. She's injecting a toxin into the snake. The snake fights hard, using her great length to create powerful thrusting movements. The Parenti is exhausted. She has lost her race of life today. The coolest box of tricks in the lizard world lives in the rainforests of Africa, India, and Madagascar. They come in every color of the rainbow to match their tropical surroundings. Chameleons. They broke away from other lizards over 60 million years ago. While most conventional lizards have evolved to live where it's hot and dry, chameleons have moved away from the deserts they run their race of life in a very different part of the world. Deep in the jungle, if you look very carefully, you'll spot the chameleon. A predator has also spotted him. Like all his kind, he can roll his eyes independently, and his colors are exhilarating. Chameleons can change their color using crystals under their skin. When he's calm, the crystals are packed together, reflecting blue and green light. But when he's alarmed, the crystals are stretched apart, turning the skin into yellow, orange, and finally red. Despite their comical appearance, chameleons will fight for their territory. This Namaqua chameleon is stalking to win his race of life. Chameleons move slowly, but their tongues do not. This incredible tongue is like a special chameleon superpower. It is the secret to the chameleon winning his race of life. A grasshopper is happily grazing on a protea. A cape dwarf chameleon is also up for a spot of grazing. The grasshopper is completely unaware. The 
chameleon unleashes his weapon. The grasshopper had no chance. The chameleon's tongue works like a catapult, shooting out at speeds of over 400 meters per second. Further up the African continent, in the jungles of Botswana, lives the flat-necked chameleon. He's looking for a meal. He's invoking his other chameleon superpower, independently moving his eyes. He can even focus each eye separately. Chameleons are the monkeys of the reptile world. They are supremely adapted for climbing trees with opposing groups of toes and a tail to end all tails. It looks like a coiled spring, but acts more like a fifth leg, uncurling to hang on branches. The chameleon is an eccentric among lizards, but he has developed his entire body to be the ultimate climber, stalker, and trapper. And for that, he's a superhero in the reptile race for life. The king of all reptiles lives in Africa, the Americas, and Australasia. He wins his race of life with his size and strength. He has no natural enemies. He's the ultimate apex predator, the crocodile. Crocodiles are the largest dinosaur left alive. They can grow to seven meters and live for 100 years. In Australia alone, four or five people per year are attacked by these monsters. The locals call them salties to distinguish them from their smaller freshwater cousins. The freshies are mostly harmless to humans. The salties are not. Saltwater crocs live in the rivers and wetlands of tropical Australia and Southeast Asia. They also live in the ocean and on the beaches. Crocs usually attack from underwater. They spot their prey on the surface and then descend. The other giant crocodile lives across the Indian Ocean. Africa, home of giant herbivores, great long rivers, and the Nile crocodile. This full-grown male is about to take part in the annual African feast, when migrating wildebeest have to cross the Mara River. He prepares for the ambush. The wildebeest are on alert. The croc strikes. There is no chance of escape. The crocodile's bite is the strongest ever measured. At 16,000 newtons, he bites down with 20 times the force of a human eating a steak. A classic crocodile death roll helps him tear off pieces of meat. The wildebeest calf has lost this lightning fast race of life. The mighty monster of the Mara River has won his. She can now manage for up to six months before she needs another meal. And by then, the wildebeest will be returning. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Over 100 million years ago, a group of reptiles took a crazy backward step. They developed elongated bodies and got rid of their legs. And it worked. They run their race of life by slithering. Snakes. Their bodies are so thin, most of them have room for only one working lung. A quarter of a snake species are venomous. The venom is used for defense as well as catching prey. Some have a warning system to tell predators to back off. 
No venomous snakes kill their prey by constriction. All snakes rely on ambush to catch their prey and use their forked tongues to smell the air in three dimensions. Snakes prefer to stay hidden for their own safety and to surprise their prey. They need to be well camouflaged and fast moving. This diamond python is planning to surprise her prey from above. The brush turkey has no idea she's there. This is the most spectacular use of venom in the snake world. The spitting cobra directs his deadly jets into the eyes of his victims. Far from the land of cobras is a giant island of pythons, taipans, and king brown snakes, Australia. Inland taipans are among the most venomous snakes in the world. They live right across Australia, from the desert to grasslands, and dry forest. This adult male can smell something in the distance, something that could be tasty. He's hoping for a small mammal. He can see what he's been looking for. The snake makes straight for his target, a pair of desert rats. They're cornered. They will need to move very fast to escape. A second bite. The venom is doing its work, paralyzing the muscles of the unfortunate desert rat. Inland Taipan venom is extremely toxic and works fast. In a short time, the venom reaches the rat's diaphragm and the snake's victim is unable to breathe. The rat is nearly safe to eat. The inland Taipan has won her race of life today. The inland Taipan will now have a good rest to allow his meal to digest. Even extremely venomous snakes must fight every day to win their race of life. These inland Taipan eggs were laid in the spring. They need to develop where the earth is damp to provide extra moisture for the growing embryo. After eight weeks, the young snakes start to emerge. Taipans are born ready to run their race of life. They are fully formed and fully armed with venom. Each baby snake will grow up to 2.5 meters long. These little snakes might be venomous, but they are very vulnerable. Even after the taipans reach their full length, they could become a meal for something bigger. Like a king brown snake. His venom cannot help him this time, as the king browns are immune to other snakes' venom. The young snake is fighting to stay alive against the odds. It's a highly toxic race of life. Our inland Taipan has lost his race of life. He is much easier to swallow than a bush rat, but it takes a long time. Muscles all the way down the snake's body are working to pull their meal into the stomach. After a long struggle, the king brown snake is able to relax and enjoy her meal. Australia is famous for more than its deserts. This is the home of the Great Barrier Reef, the perfect place for another large reptile. Turtles. For some of these gentle giants, the race of life could be over for an entire species. 
They have survived on this planet for over 150 million years. Turtles are known for being peaceful, but not this one. This is a snapping turtle, and he's hungry. So he's going fishing, and for his bait, he's using a strange appendage on the end of his tongue. A small fish is also after a feed. The fish knew nothing about losing her race of life today. The snapping turtle chews contentedly. Most marine turtles are also carnivorous. Their favorite food is often easy to catch, jellyfish. These strange animals are mostly made up of water. So turtles need to eat a huge amount if they are going to gain any nutrition. The Great Barrier Reef is the Amazon rainforest of the undersea world. Millions of plants and animals fight to survive here every day. This is a popular place for green sea turtles. A lone green turtle is looking for some good grazing. She's the only type of turtle that's a vegetarian. She likes to eat the algae and seaweed growing on the coral reef. She must keep an eye out for sharks, but her main enemy today is humans. She's found a good eating spot. By eating away the plant material, she lets in the sunlight, essential for coral to grow. The green turtle may cover thousands of kilometers in a year. As she travels, she grazes on the reef. And so, green turtle and coral reef are running their race of life together. Turtles return to the beach where they were born when it's time for them to lay their own eggs. It's been a long and tiring journey. Then, the hardest part. Adult turtles are not well designed for moving around on land. This female green turtle is carrying about 150 eggs. She must find a safe place to lay them. When she's chosen the right spot, she will slowly dig a deep hole in the sand. This is hard work and often happens in the cool of night. As she lays, a fresh layer of sand keeps her eggs cool and hidden. The eggshell is soft and leathery, so it's not damaged by the drop into the nest. The mother will soon return to the sea. She will never meet her babies. Around 60 days later, the eggs are ready to hatch. Brown pelicans have traveled to the island for the occasion. This is the most dangerous time in a turtle's life. Predators from all around are gathering to feast on the emerging turtle babies. Black vultures normally eat carrion, but this is too good an opportunity to miss. The turtles bravely struggle towards the sea. They are instinctively drawn to the light reflected from the water. The vultures are in hot pursuit. Less than 10% of baby turtles will make it to the water's edge. Crabs are also after these tasty little morsels of meat. But the little turtle is determined to survive. As the relative safety of the sea gets closer, the turtle is aware of another predator. If they stay very still, they are hard to see against the sand. The hatchling is nearly there. Many of his brothers and sisters are under attack. The turtle race to survive is literally a sprint to the sea. Finally, he's in. Freedom at last. But he must evade sharks and other underwater predators if he's to be one of the lucky few to win the turtle race of life. Reptiles were the dominant family of animals on Earth for tens of millions of years. 
The prehistoric giants may have died out, but they have left their mark. With the ancient turtles, the great variety of lizards, the killer instinct of snakes, and the majesty of the crocodiles. These are the long-term survivors of the reptile race of life.